Every time you sit down to write, you face a new situation. So every writing task is a new situation, but each writing situation contains the same elements or, or variables, you might say. So you always have a writer. Sometimes it's yourself, sometimes you're writing with other people. You always have a topic or something to write about, a subject. Uh, you always have readers, a reader or more readers. Um, and you always have a purpose or an intention or a reason to write. So even in a simple situation like writing in your diary, those elements are there. You are the writer, but you're also the reader for a personal diary. Um, the topic might be your life things that are happening in your daily experience. And your purpose may be to record that for your future self. So you're writing to yourself perhaps in the future. Every time you sit down to write, those four elements are, are there. The writer, the topic, what you're writing about, the reader, and the task, or the, the, the purpose, the intention. So writing changes in every situation um, because, of course, the demands, the expectations, the understandings are different. But what writers need to do, especially if they wish to improve, is they need to think very carefully about what the situation is. What are the expectations? Um, what will the professor want to hear? Or what will my colleagues want to hear? What do they know now? What do they need to know? What are they looking for in my text? And, and can I produce those things? In writing in every situation is hugely dependent on a sympathy or an empathy with the reader. What is it the reader needs from me at this point? And what is it that I want the reader to get from this? Do I want to convince them, amuse them, challenge them? What is it that my task is and how do I want the reader to take up that task? I think that one of the things that's difficult in almost all situations, writing situations, is that expectations are often tacit. So that's true in workplaces as well, which I've also studied. The expectations are tacit, the conventions, the rules, the regulations, what you can say, what you can't say, how you can say it, are often not made explicit. You have to figure them out as a writer. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions, and you should ask questions. In the classroom, when the teacher tells you, write an essay about this or do this kind of a report, ask that teacher to explain as much as possible what they are expecting, what the, the values that they will use to, to judge the, the, the writing, what will be a good example of that text. Um, and in the workplace too, ask around. Why is it that we report this? When do we report it? Who reads it? What are the consequences of this text? So when I write it, who's going to get it and what's going to happen as a result of them getting it? So you should ask questions about this as a writer. You should become informed about what happens with your text once it's launched into the world. Because you can't follow it around and say, oh no, what I really meant there was it's on its own. Um, and once it's left home, got to be fully capable of speaking for itself. I think one of the di really difficult aspects of moving from undergraduate into graduate writing is that in undergraduate writing, you tend to be judged on how good a eavesdropper you are. Have you listened carefully to the discipline's conversation? And have you reported it correctly to your teachers? When you move into graduate work, you're often then expected to be a part of the conversation. Just don't report it, join it. Um, which means that you have to suddenly take a position. Um, and that's very, very difficult. Because how aggressive are you going to be? How confident are you going to be? So when we, we make our claims in writing, we say this proves, or this suggests, or this indicates. So, and so we boost our claims by saying this is irrefutable proof that, um, or we hedge them by saying this might mean or this looks like. When you become a member of the conversation, that is as a graduate student, join the conversation and you begin to disagree with Foucault or you disagree with uh, Derrida or something like that, uh, there's a tough position to take on that. Who are you to disagree with these people? 
Um, that's the tough thing for graduate students, I think, to learn to have a voice of some authority. That is to, to say, I, I know this stuff. I, I can speak about this stuff with some authority. I think it's the joining of the conversation that, that is the real challenge. I am now part of it. I am speaking as a member of this group of people, not as an outsider.